a sad situation. Yeah. Have you spoken to him? To Aaron? To Aaron since? I have not, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, and it was one of those things where like, you know, hey, we're gonna be brothers forever. And yeah. you know, I mean, there was literally a point, I don't know if it's on the show or not, where, you know, he started saying that he could feel like Corey Haim speaking through him. It was very weird. I mean, there were these crazy parallels going on. Yeah. Um, but that said, we made all these plans for after the show that he was gonna be part of the documentary and he wanted to help me record the title track and we were gonna do all this stuff together. He wanted my brother to manage him. Mm. And then he disappeared. Just disappeared. Just disappeared. And it was like, I would say, oh, typical flaky Hollywood stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think it's deeper than it's that. Deeper than that, yeah. yeah. I, hope, I hope he finds his way. It seems in the first <laughs> episode you, you were really there for him. And I mean, is I just that... Was, I just felt it. Yeah. I just, you know, I was sitting there and it was very genuine because it was like, <laughs> Here's a guy who's saying everything that I feel, mm -hmm. you know, I, I get it, you know, mom screwed you over, used you, abused you, and what have you got to show for it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you just want to feel like love, right? You just want to feel love. And I, and I totally could relate. My brother Eden could totally relate. My wife could totally, you know, we yeah. were all just sitting there going like, oh. Right. So I just went over and gave him a hug. But that said, from that moment on, I feel like he kind of clung to me and we kind mm -hmm. of, you know, developed this brother type relationship, which honestly, although I loved it, was also a bit hard because I was there to work on my relationship with my own brother. Okay. So it became a bit of a conflict of interest because it was like, I want to be there for you, but I also need to be there for my brother because this is our only opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, but that said, uh, I still did what I could to show, you know, compassion and love to Aaron. And I have nothing but, you know, the best wishes for him. I really hope that, you know, he, I, I think that there is something cathartic about this whole thing he's going through right now. Yeah. Because he told us a lot of these secrets and confidence. So just, I can say that much, sure. even if it's not on the show, I don't know what's gonna be on the show and what's not, because mm -hmm. I haven't seen the season yet. But can I just say that much, that I had many long talks with Aaron Carter, and so did my wife and he confided a great many things in us. Do you think the public speaking, the face tattoos, things like that, do you think that's all like a, a maybe a cry for help in some way? Yeah. I think it's all, unfortunately, a symptom. Mm -hmm. It's a symptom. It's, a, it's a, an effect of the abuse. Mm -hmm. And it's the same as Corey Haim. Yeah. You look at those parallels, mm -hmm. you know, right before Corey died, there was so much of that. You know, every day there would be a new story about some crazy thing that he was doing. Why? Why was he acting out like that? 